just so proud of all the females and like growing so big. It's really powerful to see. It's the best part about it. Hi, I'm Loser Fruit, and this is my story. Future is a talent show looking to find the next generation of big creators. The winner will receive $100,000. To apply, all you need to do is create a YouTube short and submit your YouTube short at youtube.show. You really don't want to miss this. Make sure to subscribe. Now, back to my story. <gasps> oh my god, run. <laughs> it's me! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? I was always playing video games growing up. I had three older cousins and an older brother who were playing it. And I was jealous that they could play it because they were older. So gaming has always been a part of my childhood. Before I got into streaming, I was at university studying journalism and I thought I was gonna be a journalist or a writer of some sort. And then in the third year, I found out about streaming. I was mostly a spectator. Then American friends convinced me, you know, you have an accent, you're a female, you should get into streaming. And so I was like, okay. And then I really loved it. I kept pursuing it, like did it daily. And I started streaming when I was 19. And 19 to 21, even though we think, oh yeah, we got it all sorted out. It's probably the most awkward years in life. I was a little bit nervous to get into streaming. Being quite introverted, that's always been a big struggle. It was only the first few streams. Whenever I take a break and come back from streams, I still get that nervous that like no one will ever show up. But no, I just had a, such a good time with it straight away, even if it was only like a few viewers. This game has everything. I really enjoyed it. Look at me, I'm streaming. Look at all my streaming friends. In 2013, when I started streaming, it was like a few months in and I was getting like subs and donations and that. And I was like, okay, now this could be something. So I moved out of my mum's house to go pursue streaming. So I knew pretty early on that it could be something really special if I just put my all into it and took the risk. Let's do this, baby. Thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. No one was really doing content for money. It was just unseen, so no one had really heard of it. So when you say what you do, no one would really understand. Whereas now everyone's like, oh yeah, I know. My child wants to be a YouTuber. <laughs> That's what they always say. I'm like, okay. It's not like my streams were good anyway, so it's not like we need. What's going on guys and welcome back to Click It Today! All the Click couples you know and love are going to war. Click was something special because it was, you know, IRL friends, very genuine type thing. We just wanted to make videos together. I met a few people like Muzelk and Marcus and Cray. Fortnite was what we were playing all together and before that we were playing Overwatch together and then we just decided to get a house together and make content and we really didn't have much else of a plan other than that. Oh my god! Yeah, we started to film together and that became a really popular channel and a real big part of my own journey. In our own content, we're popping up. I had my first like viral one. Lee. 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 Hello, Lufu. What the? Your sniping has going? no end. So I was dealing with the first bit of huge chunk of views and how to keep it and the stress of not being able to get that again. I, Lee, how did you do it? How did you go to the exact same spot? How did you do it? We love that Click did well, but we were all quite focused on our own channels because they were doing even better than Click was. It happened, one million subscribers, we hit it. We hit one million subscribers. It was like very split mind between the success of our own channels and the success of Click. You know what? This is gonna be the end of the Click house because it wasn't really working out for any of us. I think the houses that we had were really successful, but now it's just time to come to their rightful end. It is hard to have uh, multiple people have opinions on one thing. I've learned a lot more patience and structure and working with other people, which is actually quite necessary for YouTubers because a lot of them haven't had a job. And you know what? Working with other people is actually quite necessary instead of just talking to a camera all day. People did want to help me out because I was a bit shy. I was like, I didn't want to bother people too much, but the reason we're in the house is to make content with others. So since then I've collabed more with people and that's been a huge part of growing my content. Well, hello. Come on in, come on in. 
this is my setup. I have my lights, which do a lot of work, a lot of lumens going in. My, my Sony camera. Sure, mic all set up, ready to go. Look at it, it's all coloured and pretty. Oh, I have such good taste. Yeah, look at I look at the calendar, what I've got going today. Sometimes I straight up go recording in the afternoon. Sometimes I'm streaming, and then I have a bit of a schedule. People don't think I have a schedule, but I have a schedule. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I load up Fortnite. I just play some games. Creating content, I used to just stream it, then turn it into videos. Now, it's more like I'm planning these ideas, planning the thumbnails first, then filming it and recording it offline so I can just focus on the recording. So it's actually changed so much and there's so much more we have to do. Like we used to do like montages at the beginning and used to have like a title screen come up. But now it's more like, this is the idea and we're getting into it straight away. The biggest thing I learned was kind of separating myself from the content and realizing what people would want to watch instead of just what I think would be good. And I think that was the biggest thing on all platforms. You definitely can cater to the audience a little bit to try to get into that one niche. But if something goes viral, it is going to get hate regardless. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long to build the thick skin that you needed to do it. Now all comments are more like fun. How can I turn this around into a positive? And that's kind of a fun challenge when someone throws you something real negative and you're like, no, nah, I can spin this. <laughs> you make this funny and good for everyone else watching. Oh, shake my head. Get your gachi hyper head out of the gutter. <laughs> Because I was editing for myself, like I think most YouTubers start out doing, we all start editing for ourselves to get our own vibe of how the videos flow. It takes a while for I think most people to delegate when you still want the content to feel like natural. Since then I've, I'm trying to grow the team even bigger. Two big key people in my career have been my editor. It's just amazing at his job. And someone to work with brands. She's brought in great deals and knows my worth. But yeah, the delegation part at first was hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's hard. Because I'm just someone who's like, I know how I could see something be done. I might as well do it. A few instances which I can say where someone has popped off doing short streams and energetic streams still works. But a lot of, a lot of the examples that people see are people streaming like 12 hours minimum a day. And that's how they get noticed. They're doing these huge like subathons that last for days and that's how they get their attention. And so it's kind of unhealthy, but that's why I kind of lean towards liking YouTube more because it has like a clear structure. You make your video, it's out there and then it's, it's, it's always doing things. It's always going up in views. You don't have to actively be there. That being said, it's still addicted to streaming and still contracted by Twitch, so I smile. <laughs> I still got to do my hours. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so good at this game. My next thing would be to find something on YouTube that I can do and elevate what I do now. Whether that would be an IRL thing or whether that be making my gaming content better, I always just want to make really good content. I'm just so proud of all the females who are like growing so big. It's really powerful to see. You know, when young girls come up to me and they're the faces, I can't describe it. It's too wholesome, it's too cute. It's the best part about it. Yucha, it was mostly just because of uh, uh, Ali A and his like, inspiration behind it and the way he was speaking about it. And I was just like, I, I respect Ali A a lot. So I was like, yeah, I'll join it. I could judge people, sure, <laughs> let's go. And that was pretty much it, honestly. It was very simple. My judging style will be savage, probably. No, oh, no, I would feel too bad after. Maybe, I don't know, I'll think about it. <laughs> I feel like particularly teenagers will love it, as, as well as like people who are trying to get into it. It's a fun way to try and have an excuse to do things, because a lot of people want to film content, but they're, they don't have a reason to, so it's a great way for them to be like, oh man, I actually, I want to film this because of this, and then, oh, I actually really like that. I'm going to keep it up just for myself. Make sure to like and subscribe. How, how, how are you not subscribed already? Subscribe.